rioting erupted in cities around France despite an enormous police deployment with cars and buildings set ablaze, stores looted and more than 1,300 people arrested. The incident that led to this latest outrage in France was when Nahil, a 17-year-old teenager, was fatally shot in a Paris suburb during a traffic stop. The Nanterre prosecutor Pascal Prache said on Thursday, June 29th, that his initial investigation led him to conclude the conditions for the legal use of the weapon were not met in the shooting. The shooting of the teenager was captured on video and stirred up long simmering tensions between police and young people in disadvantaged neighbourhoods, where the killing has been seen as an example of police violence. There has been growing concern in France over police tactics, particularly against young men from non-white minorities. Interior Minister Gerald Darmanin said the number of police officers deployed would more than quadruple. He also said the professionals of disorder must go home. Whilst French President Emmanuel Macron said these acts are totally unjustifiable, the unrest has revived memories of riots in 2005 that convulsed France for three weeks and forced then-President Jacques Chirac to declare a state of emergency. These incidents once again bring to the surface French integration and what has been seen as its failure after decades of migrants coming to France. After just two weeks since announcing its National Defence Review, Germany will establish permanent presence of around 4,000 troops in Lithuania in a bid to strengthen NATO's eastern flank against Russia. The move is an attempt by Berlin, which has promised a Zettenwender or a turning point in its role in its European defence and security after Russia's invasion of Ukraine to scale up its commitments amid repeated calls from the NATO Baltic member states to strengthen its eastern flank. We expressly acknowledge our responsibility, our obligation as a NATO member state as the largest economy in Europe to stand up for the protection of the eastern flank, said Boris Pistorius, who was visiting Lithuania along with NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg to watch a Germany-led military exercise. For decades, Germany was careful not to do anything which could bring back fears of its past. But with the geopolitical reality changing with Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Germany once again is taking the lead. Pakistan's leaders confirmed this week that the International Monetary Fund IMF, reached a staff-level agreement to provide $3 billion to Pakistan through a nine-month standby arrangement. The agreement reduced the near-term risks of default, but the reforms required by the IMF will likely inflame anti-government grievances in a run-up to the general and provincial elections due around October or November. The $3 billion bailout builds on Pakistan's 6.5 million IMF program originally agreed upon in 2019, which is due to expire on June 30. Pakistan first took an IMF loan back in 1958, and 23 programs later, the economy and Pakistan's debt is in a worse position then when the program began decades ago. So will the bailout make any difference? Based on Pakistan IMF history, it will likely make things worse.